HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Team Hoyt pays a visit to students at Elmwood School. We show you highlights from the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball playoff run. And we also have highlights from the Hopkinton Middle School talent show. But first, Hopkinton and Ashland held public meetings to discuss a possible merger of the town's fire departments. Hopkinton and Ashland held public meetings in each town to talk about a possible merger of the town's fire departments. Hopkinton Fire Chief Ken Clark talked about the background of the discussion. He mentioned this potential merger has been talked about since 2003. Throughout the last 12 years or so, studies on equipment, personnel, and facility needs have been done in both towns as well as budget needs. Chief Clark explained the staffing structure for both towns currently. On our administrative staff right now in Hopkinton, we have myself as the chief, Steve Slamman as the deputy. We have a training officer that is, the position is vacant now. And we have a fire engine officer who is, that's our fire inspector, Tom Poirier, who you see that out on the, on the uh, street all the time for your inspections, okay? And uh, that's our administrative staff and along with the admin, which is Mary Carver. Then we have uh, four duty groups which have made up of five firefighters, okay? Uh, one of those firefighters at this time is assigned and dispatched to each of those groups and they rotate it through the four firefighters that are there and there's a lieutenant lead in that group and then there's four firefighters, two of which are paramedics. Hopkinton Town Manager Norman Kamalu talked about why the merger is a possibility. In terms of capital purchases, a combined capital plan would allow the communities to use greater efficiency when you purchasing new apparatus and as you know this practice is already in place where, for example, there's equipment that Ashland purchased and because of that reason, there's no need for us here in Hopkinton to purchase the ladder. And borrowing from that model, we believe going forward, if we combine the departments, we'll be able to accomplish economies of scale when purchasing very expensive capital equipment. The town manager discussed the timetable for the possible merger. 2015, uh, selectmen will decide to seek town meeting approval to file for a home rule special legislation summer of 2015. That is if town meeting approves the merger. We'll continue working on refining the personnel costs and capital costs <coughs> leading to the town meeting discussions. Uh, we hope to finalize a joint operations procedure by July 2015. The two chiefs are currently working on that document with their teams. And ongoing issues to be determined include the cross-town deployment, dispatch, collective bargaining agreement, and we're hoping that if all goes well, that the joint or merged department will be fully operational by July 1, 2016. A couple citizens from both towns showed up to discuss their concerns about the plan. I'm a resident of Woodville. I need the ambulance. Instead of a closer department, Westbrook coming over with the area ambulance, we got to have Ashland come from their main station, go through downtown Hopkinton at a bad hour, and um, take a longer time to get that. I think both towns should start taking care of their own town. We're fine in Ashland, we really are. But we need more guys. I think it's the same thing in here in Poppington. My ladder truck in, in, in Ashland comes here all the time. 
I know it's mutual aid. That's the way. It, that's the way it is. But I'm paying for that. That ladder. I think Hopkinson should go out and get their own ladder. That's the way that. I, that's just the way that I feel about it. Sorry. Hopkinton Selectman John Mosier closed out the public meeting with the reminder that the merger is only a possibility for both towns and public input is encouraged. We're looking for creative ways to meet the explosive demands that both towns are experiencing. And I think anyone driving, driving through both towns will, will see uh, some of the unique demands, particularly that are coming up on, on the border between the two towns. And what this merger is, is an attempt that has the, um, the roots in the operational demands and has been uh, promoted thus far by both chiefs. And so we'll continue to take public input and both boards of selectmen will consider that and, uh, and we'll move forward. For more information on the possible merger, stay tuned to HCAM News and our website hcam.tv. Rick and Dick Hoyt paid a visit to Elmwood School to talk about their story. The father Dick and his paralyzed son Rick have competed in over 1,000 athletic events. And wherever they go, they bring the messages that anything is possible, and yes, you can. Despite Dick Hoyt retiring from marathons and longer races due to age, Rick will still be competing in the Boston Marathon this year with family friend and Bill Rick dentist Brian Lyons pushing Rick's wheelchair. Dick Hoyt talked to me about the many happenings and upcoming events for Team Hoyt. Rick and his father Dick Hoyt told their story at Elmwood School. The father and son are well known for competing in the Boston Marathon in addition to other marathons, triathlons and athletic competitions. At birth, Rick Hoyt was born a spastic quadriplegic with cerebral palsy. But that has not stopped the father and son from competing in over 1,000 athletic events and they are a prime example showing that anything is possible. This year, they brought their message to Elmwood School of yes, you can. Team Hoyt is a father and son team, and uh, I'm the dad, and Rick, my son, when he was born, the doctor said forget him, put him away, put him in an institution, he's going to be nothing but a vegetable for the rest of his life. Well, today, Rick is 53 years old, he's graduated from public high school, graduated from Boston University, lives all by himself in his own apartment, and Rick and I have competed in over 1,100 athletic events in the past 35 years. You know, and we're still trying to figure out what kind of vegetable Rick is. <laughs> uh, are, are you guys going to be competing in any more events coming up? Yes, we are. Um, last year we made an announcement that Rick and I will not be doing any more Ironman triathlons or full marathons. I'm 75 years old and my body's starting to tell me to slow down, but Rick and I will be doing Olympic-sized triathlons and 10-mile races and 5 miles and 10Ks, the shorter distance type of races, and we're hoping to be able to do 20 races this summer. And can you tell us about the, the message you look to convey doing these presentations? Okay, our message is, yes, you can. There isn't anything you can't do as long as you make up your mind to do it. And there's no such word as can't in the Hoyt vocabulary. If I to do the world's championship, I am in triathlon out in Kona, Hawaii, they also turned us down. They said, Dick, you're a good athlete. You can compete, but your disabled son has to sit in the sidelines and watch you. And I said, no, we don't do things that way. So we were able to negotiate with them. And Rick is the first disabled person in the world, and still is, to ever compete and complete the Ironman triathlon. And because of his efforts, they now have a physically challenged division out there. Now, you guys participated in the Boston Marathon last year. Could you tell us uh, how that went? Well, it was just unbelievable because it was the last marathon that Rick and I will be doing together. Rick will still be competing in the Boston Marathons, but he's got somebody else that will be pushing him. And he's a real heck of a guy. He's a local dentist from Bill Ricker, Mass. And he's competed in two Ironmans and 14 uh, marathons. 
and he's just a great human being and so we're really looking forward because Rick says if it comes down to one race a year he wants it to be the Boston Marathon and Hoppington is our favorite place it's just like we've been adopted by the people in Hoppington as you can see at the starting line is that bronze statue that was unveiled in the year 2013 it's just unbelievable and we really love being here today with the schools now Team Hoyt they it's grown throughout the years. A lot more uh, people are participating uh, with Team Hoyt, and, and it, it, it just seems to be spreading like wildfire, uh, especially throughout the Boston Marathon. Can you just talk about the growth of Team Hoyt? Yeah, it's unbelievable because when, you know, when Rick was born, they didn't want us going into restaurants. People would get up and leave. They didn't want him going to school. They didn't want us competing in the Boston Marathon or road races. And now we're wanted all over the world. It's just amazing how big our story is spreading. And all these other countries emailing us and all that. Matter of fact, Father's Day is coming up. We're going to be down. New Bedford, Rick's going to be running at a half marathon with Brian. And we're going to go live over to Italy because it's Father's Day over there and do it. Um, an a interview with them and then it's it's just amazing you know we've been to Canada we've been to Japan we've been to China we've been to Germany we've been to El Salvador we've just been all over the place and now we've started Team Hoyt Virginia Beach Team Hoyt San Diego Team Hoyt New England Team Hoyt Canada and actually they want us to go over to Japan and start a Team Hoyt over in Japan it's just amazing what's happening and what's going on well, I'm sure Team Hoyt uh, will continue to grow. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. It will continue to grow, and I think it's going to get bigger and bigger. And I think one of these days you're going to see a Team Hoyt in almost every state. For more about Team Hoyt, you can go to teamhoyt.com as well as our website, hcam.tv. Students at Hopkinton Middle School took their talents to the stage at the Middle School Talent Show this past week. Here is a look at the many talented performers.
performers did a fantastic job. On Tuesday, March 24th, be part of a live studio audience in our H-Camp studios at 77 Main Street. At 7 p.m., Hopkinton Middle School science teacher Cameron Hustis discusses her extracurricular clubs and talks about the geek culture. Then Cheryl Peralt, host of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, will talk about finding her love of poetry. That's Tuesday, March 24th, 7 p.m., right here at the HCAM Studios. Book your seat to be part of the audience by calling 508-435-7887 or email stage at hcam.tv. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. We will be right back after a quick break. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participate in nominating your HHS grad. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team clinched a postseason spot after getting their 10th win of the season against Medfield, the team finished 11-9 and overall and clinched the 5th seed in the Central Division II bracket. Their first matchup was on the road against 4th seeded Wayland. In the quarterfinals of the Central Division II playoffs, the 11-9 and Hopkinton Hillers took on the 11-7 Wayland Warriors at the Wayland Gymnasium. First quarter, Matlock hits the first field goal of the game for the Hillers to make it 4-2, but Joey Lucchetti responds with a three, making it 7-2 Wayland. Hayden Pereira did a nice job defensively, a hard block underneath. The Warriors outscored the Hillers in the first, 17-13. Second quarter, Mitch Nagel grabbed this miss, Jake Doherty three, and put it off the glass for two. Moments later, Jonathan Ng hits at the halftime buzzer for two. The Hillers led at the half, 23-22. Third quarter, Jake Doherty doing what he does, hitting for three to put the Hillers up 29-23. Waylon was not going away, however. Wesley Jones draws the and one here. After three quarters of play, it was Hillers 33, Waylon 30. A whole lot of free throw shooting in the fourth quarter as both teams were not afraid to get physical. Joey Lucchetti hit four free throws in the quarter. Waylon pulled within eight with just under three minutes left. In the first 10 minutes of the second half, Waylon went 4 for 34 from the field, but had a late surge. Andrew Straub hits here with a rebuttal to make it 49 to 43 with below two minutes left in the fourth. Wesley Jones hit for three with 115 left to put Waylon within five. Waylon trying to make it a one possession game. Jones misses the three. Hayden Pereira grabs the rebound, but then airs it out and it's intercepted by Straub. And then Straub airs it back up court to Dylan Mortis, who hit, and with 15.3 seconds left, it's a 51 to 48 lead for the Hillers. Waylon quickly fouls Hayden Pereira. Out as ever, and the first free throw is no good. Now this is the most important free throw of the game right here. You hit this, it's a two possession game. This is it. Got it. And the Hopkinton Hillers hold on to take down the Wayland Warriors 
53 to 48. The Hillers advance to take on Marlboro at WPI in the semifinals. And the Hopkinton Hillers improved to 12 and 9 overall. Matt Locke had 19 points, and Jake Doherty had 12 points in the Hillers' playoff victory. Following the victory over Wayland, Hopkinton headed to WPI on Monday, March 2nd to take on the first seeded 18 and 3 Marlboro Panthers in the semifinals. The 12 and 9 Hopkinton Hillers met up with the 18 and 3 Marlboro Panthers in the semifinals of the Central Division 2 bracket. The Hillers struggled to find offense in the first quarter, but Austin O'Dell laying down a sweet block. Matt Locke put in the first field goal of the game for the Hillers, then had a steal off the inbound. Unfortunately, no points from the steal, but great hustle. Owen Capadonna strikes from beyond the perimeter. He tallied up two threes in the first quarter. Capadonna missed this three, but Marlboro recovers and hits Brian Short from up top. He knocks it down. Three three-point field goals for Short in the first quarter as Marlboro outscores Hopkinton 18-5 in the first. Second quarter, a defensive board by Doherty leads to a Pereira two-bucket. Hillers got outscored in the quarter 14-11 and trailed 32-16 at the half. Hayden Pereira put up four points in the third quarter as the Hillers outscored Marlboro 12-5 in the quarter. A wild beginning to the fourth quarter. The Hillers continued on a 17-0 run. 6.39 left in the quarter. The Hillers got within two points. This Nick Canal jumper made it a 37-35 game. Despite a great steal and Pat Ryan going coast to coast, the Hillers were outscored 18-5 after the 17-0 run, mostly on Panthers free throws. Hopkinton falls to the Marlboro Panthers 55-40 in the semifinals. Hillers finished 12-10 overall. Brian Short put up 18 points, Matlock 11 for the Hillers. Congratulations on a terrific season to Coach Keenan and crew. It was another fun year for the Hopkinton Hillers in the winter sports season. A lot of great playoff runs. Coming up at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, April 7th, Hopkinton Police Chief Edward Lee and Hopkinton Fire Chief Ken Clark will be live on AHCAM taking your questions. You can email questions ahead of time to chiefslog at hcam.tv. For more about new programming coming up on the AHCAM channels, here is our Promotions Coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. Tonight at 8 p.m., join the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts as they celebrate the first anniversary of the show. We've actually had a kind of a wide assortment of guests, and yeah. Ann Michelle, who worked on my hair, was actually, and Jeannie Bambuca were our first guests on the show, talking about the marathon, marathon. last year. On Monday, March 16th at 6.30 p.m., the Senior Center Quilters Group and the people in it are highlighted in Senior View. The first quilt I ever made was Grandmother's Flower Garden. Oh. Yes. And um, I took uh, lessons at the high school with Mrs. Duchamp. In Wake Up and Smell the Poetry at 7 p.m., G.S. Picard performs her original songs for the audience. Every little dream a child dreams that we should never take away. We'll grow along with them, help them keep the faith from day to day. On Tuesday, March 17th at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. In All About Hopkinton, on Wednesday, March 18th at 8 p.m., Stephen Benford discusses Keep Smiling for Abby's anaphylaxis awareness fundraising efforts. Our goal is, is about anaphylaxis, not about food allergies. It could be a latex or a medicine allergy. Uh, it, it could be an insect sting or food. Uh, all these things trigger anaphylaxis. On Thursday, March 19th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will also air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Hopkinton Middle School Talent Show will be airing throughout the week. For program dates and times, check hcam.tv slash education. Would you like to have the HCAM Insider newsletter delivered to you every week? If so, just send me an email at courtney at hcam.tv. And don't forget to check out HCAM TV on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 30 and HCAM Ed on Comcast Channel 96 and Verizon Channel 31. As always, thanks for watching. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. 
Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. Yeah.